Okay, it's the one o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. I don't have to tell you any more than that, except that this is Talking Tax with Tom. And we're talking about, we're looking back at tax in the 2019 session from the vantage of the veto practice happening right now. That's right. Welcome back to the show, Tom. Thanks for having me back. As you uh, mentioned, uh, what happens at this point during the session is where the governor decides what to sign and what not to sign, what to veto. Uh, yesterday was a constitutional deadline date, and the, and the deadline was, was called Notice of Intent to Veto. So uh, what he did was he picked 20 bills out of the mass that he was sent, and he said, I might veto these. What we know is that any bill that's not on the list is going to become law somehow, either with or without the governor's signature. Uh, but the 20 on the list are being considered for, uh, for veto. Okay. Uh, of the 20, there were three that were tax bills. One uh, was involving the motion picture credit, which I'm, I'm sure not too many people have heard of, except it supports things like Hawaii Five-O, Magnum PI, and whatever other productions may come here uh, to shoot. Uh, what, we, uh, uh, what the legislation provided was that there's now a uh, $35 million rolling cap, which is the maximum that's amount a cap. of credit. That's a yeah. total fund of, of tax credit, yeah. Right. Uh, and the concern was that it, uh, with, with two major TV series here, that gets used up pretty quickly. Uh, there may not be enough for, uh, you know, to lure a major motion picture here, like Pirates of the Caribbean or Jumanji or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so they wanted kind of more room in it. Uh, the bill would have increased the $35 million to $50 million. But that's not that's not possible now. The legislature has already spoken, right? What do you mean? Well, you say there are people who don't think that's enough money. Yes. What happens now in the veto practice? Uh, the governor can either sign uh, this bill, which would increase the 30, thirty-five to fifty. He could veto it, which which leaves it at thirty-five, and then the legislature goes back and does its thing next session. Okay. Okay. I see. So, you know, it won't be rolling back. It'll be, you know, either s stepping forward a little bit or stepping sideways. So stepping to the side, yeah. yeah. What are your uh, expectations on this bill? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, the, the objection that the governor had uh, was that part of the bill requires UH to convey some land to the High Technology Development Corporation, and he kind of didn't like. Um, the legislature inter interfering with the UH's independence like that. So uh, that seems to be... Um, well, that's a rider in the, in, the, in the film credit bill? Yes, it is. So how did that get in there? Nothing to do, nothing to do with the film credit at all. It's politics, of <laughs> wow. course. Wow, okay. This is going to be on the final exam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it got, it got snuck in uh, mid midway through the process. At the legislature. How much um, land, how much value? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, that complicates it. Is that complicated for him? I guess it does. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it seems to be kind of off the main issue. Well, I, you know, it's, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I remember a time when the film credit was a part of Act 221. Uh, yes. Act 221 included you know, the film credit, and it was important. Uh, and, and the film office, a couple of, of the officials there were campaigning to, to have uh, film credit to encourage uh, filmmakers to come here, to encourage Hollywood uh, to come here. What's interesting, though, is that the state policy has not actually incentivized local filmmakers. <laughs> this is mostly about Hollywood. And, uh, I, you know, I, I really wonder what their larger thinking could be, would be, might be, should have been over the last, what, 10 or 15 years to build a local film industry. I haven't done that. Well, it's uh, certainly given uh, people a lot more chances than they would have had if the major productions have not come here. Well, that's true. Um, the, one good thing is that these productions do come into town, they do spend money, they, they, they do take advantage of local talent, uh, not, not only in front of the screen, but, but also on, in the back. 
uh, we have catering, we have transportation, we have all kinds of other things that are necessary to make a production work. It reminds me of the hotel industry, you know. So yes, the hotels hire a lot of local help. Everybody gets to make hospital corners and, and serve meals. Um, but the profit on the hotel goes somewhere else. Hotels are often REITs, by the way. We should talk about that soon. Um, so, you know, what, what, what happens is um, we don't really encourage um, local activities in either case. And it would be better, I think. And, and you look at film, you know, the, the film is produced, the film is invested in from the mainland. And the profits, if that, if that movie, that serial takes off like a rocket, let's assume 5.0, I don't know if they take off like a rocket, but um, if that makes a lot of money, the well, profit would, doesn't would... stay here. The profit goes there, just like the hotels. Well, but in the meantime, they're paying a lot of money to people here. True, but wouldn't, wouldn't it be better if we had that industry here? If we were a kind of junior Hollywood with our own producers, our own investors, our own directors, our own actors and staff and what have you. Uh, there are some people who are trying to do that. They've Had, been planning a long time. Yep, ha haven't gotten that far so far, but uh, uh, you know, they, we can still try. Okay, when are we going to find out about uh, David Ige's action on this particular uh, film credit? Yeah, I, I believe uh, first week of July. That's okay. the, July the, 9, I, I want to say. Is that right? Ninth to the tenth, something like that. Yeah. Um, that's when we find out for sure what's what's signed and what's vetoed. Uh, you, you were talking about the REIT bill. Oh yes, for always. Real estate investment trust. That's all, that's also in the list. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the concern expressed by the governor uh, was that you know this might discourage it the legislature. Yes, it did. So the idea is that REITs, offshore REITs, by definition, offshore REITs. We do be... have one locally, you know. Oh, okay. All REITs then would be taxed um, as if they were Hawaii corporations. As if they were corporations, yes. Yeah. And that means they, that the REITs who don't ordinarily pay tax, the offshore REITs, I guess, don't pay Hawaii income tax, would then well, pay Hawaii income tax. REITs don't pay income tax. They, the individuals as a pass-through, the owners of the REIT, like a limited partnership, right. they like pay that, tax, yeah. a pass-through. That, that's the idea. Yeah. So... So, uh, you know, uh, one, one thing I heard about that is that if the bill is signed, it's not going to mean that much money to the state of Hawaii. I, you, you must know more about the, the numbers. But yeah, the, the, it was like um, 60 million would be the, the total benefit to the state of Hawaii out of the, the passage of yeah, the Yeah, the, the Department of Taxation um, testified that uh, revenue gain would be like maybe three or four million for the first year and then 10 million in subsequent years. Uh, I guess they're premising that on. You know, the REITs having um, you know, de deductions that they could otherwise claim that they haven't because they don't pay tax, which, which I think is questionable anyway. Uh, but, you know, none of us have seen uh, the department's assumptions that uh, went into that revenue estimate. And uh, the, um, the bill proponents claim that the revenue gain would be closer to $60 million. Mm. Yeah, that's, so, a, that's a number I heard. Yeah, so, so uh, we, we don't know um, because they're all predictions. You don't know what the tax returns are going to look like. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's theoretical at this point. So, uh, you know, so you got REITs that are local, as you mentioned. Yes. Uh, you got developing or developer organizations that are not REITs local. They that's say correct. that. They say they want the, the playing field to be level. They say they're at a disadvantage because they have to pay tax where offshore REITs don't pay the state tax. And then you got the offshore REITs, all these people swirling around the governor's desk now, and each one trying to find a voice, trying to influence and persuade him about this bill. So what are the, what are the vectors and factors and, and influencers that are happening now with him? Well... Uh, you're correct in that he's he's being pushed by two different sides, um, and you know now he, he has to kind of like weigh, uh, you know whose prediction is better and for what reason. Uh, the uh, the veto proponents are saying, well, you know we may discourage investment in Hawaii, uh, we may uh, have an economic downturn because of this, we may lose jobs, etc. Uh, there's a lot of maze in there. Well, it sounds like a long shot because 
Um, there's not that much money involved, as you just said. Um, and also because um, I, you know, I don't think it would, um, I don't think it would scare, scare foreign investment off to you. I doubt it. Yeah. I mean, one reason why uh, anybody buys into, into Hawaii properties or commercial properties is because they think they're going to make money off of it. Right. On the capital gain. Not on, not on this kind of taxation we're talking about by taxing the REITs. Well, I mean, certainly it's, it's factored in, but, uh, but, but I think the main thing that brings them here is the business case. Yeah. And, and the business case is uh, we have property. It's very valuable because lots of people want it. And you know, renting on that property brings in lots of money. Yeah. And furthermore, let's take the individual owner, the pass-through owner who's on the mainland. Um, if the REIT pays tax in Hawaii, that reduces the amount of profit that he's taxed back in his home state in, on the mainland, right? That's correct. So th this money is not, this profit is not being taxed twice, only once. Right. Well, that, <laughs> it depends on your interpretation of it. Um, you know, some people think that uh, taxing uh, uh, e-corporation and taxing its dividends is double taxation already. Um, and that's the, the model that Hawaii would follow if this bill passes, or if, if it's signed into law. Mm. Okay, but that's, that's kind of where that's at. The, um, and the last uh, bill that was on the veto list uh, was the so one... So what's your prediction on the, on the read? I have no idea. Nobody I, knows, because it's in swirling activity right now. Definitely. Yeah. So, so, you know, like you mentioned, uh, there's lots of, lots of you know, pushing on both sides. Uh, where, where, it, you know, where the balloon ends up at the end of the day you know, is anybody's guess. Okay. And hardly wait till July 9th. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What's the next one? And, and the, the third one is uh, what we call the Airbnb bill. This is big. We should, we well, should it, definitely it's... spend some time on this. That's why I feel we ought to take a break. And come back and, and roll up our sleeves and get into Airbnb because there's a lot of a lot of people who care about that a lot and it's very passionate. Lots and lots of noise, including right here on ThinkTech. We'll be right back here this break, and then you see Tom and me really get into it on Airbnb. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, a host here on ThinkTech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness here on the island. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Mahalo. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Living proof we got here that tax is really exciting. Talking tax with Tom. Talking Airbnb tax with Tom. Okay, let's, let's, let's try to examine what happened here in the ledge and what's happening on the governor's desk. Okay, what we call the Airbnb bill is a bill that authorizes the platforms. And like a lot of people uh, who rent out either the whole home or part of it, uh, they advertise somehow so people can find them. Uh, if they want to travel here and stay someplace other than a hotel. So you have these different online platforms, uh, Airbnb, VRBO, uh, Flipkey, HomeAway, uh, lots of them like that. The, uh, the one that's, that sticks in people's mind for some reason, I don't know why, is Airbnb, uh, which I think is the second biggest platform here. I'm not sure which one the first is, but uh, what I heard is that it's But it's, it's big. A lot of people are involved. Yeah. And for them, it's very important. It is. What the, what the bill would do is it would uh, allow the platform to collect and pay over 
or actually will require the platform to collect and pay over the GE tax and the transient accommodations that's tax. That's Airbnb is the platform, yeah. That's one of them, yes. Uh, because, uh, yeah, make, and make no mistake, the tax is already owed. Okay. You know, you, uh, you, you rent out a, a transient vacation rental, you get some income, you, you owe the tax. You as the property owner or wh you know, whoever's deciding to rent this place out. Um, some people pay it, some people don't. And, you know, in a way to get better enforcement of this, that's why they're wanting to have these platforms who handle money anyway. Okay, sure. because the... <clears throat> they're, they're the accounting agent for the whole transaction. Right. When they the, collect the rent, so to speak. They do. When, when, the, when the people from out of state uh, book the rental, they book it on the platform, and, and uh, that person's money goes to uh, the platform. Platform takes its cut, and then whatever's left over goes to the, to the renter. Okay, so that so all the bill is trying to do is to is to uh, intercept this money flow and bring some of it to the state, uh, which is supposed to happen anyway because the the owner's supposed to pay it. Mm -hmm. But you know, some people do, some people don't. That's that's the problem. Well, now, you know, it's, it's a problem in this sense. Let me just digress for a moment. So you you say it's a platform, and it doesn't have to be Airbnb. It could be some other platform too. Mm -hmm. Suppose it's a small-time Airbnb. You know, they have 50 units all around. And the owner, he says, oh, great. Um, Airbnb small-time is going to collect this and turn it over to the state. But Airbnb small-time goes bankrupt. Airbnb doesn't, for some reason, collect it or turn it over to the state. They, they leave. They don't do it. So what does that do for the owner who expected that they would? Uh, good question, because uh, that's, that's, that fact pattern really hasn't come up. Uh, the, there, there would be, I think, personal liability on the... On part of the owner. Be his problem. Well, yeah, that, that and the platform's owner. Or yes. owners. Yes, except they might not be here. Yeah, I mean, it, it, would, it would take uh, uh, some effort to go find them and, 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 yeah. and shake them up a bit. But. Anyway, so go ahead. You were, you were describing how this works. Right. So, so all this is, is basically a withholding mechanism. Okay. Uh, the counties are upset because they want to, uh, at least so they say, enforce their zoning ordinances on, hey, you know, people are not supposed to be doing transit vacation rentals in this area anyway. Uh, and the reason why the governor is, is you know, hitting the pause button on this bill uh, is because Honolulu just passed, uh, what, what, what's, what's it called, Bill 89? Yeah. Um, that basically says if you, uh, if you advertise a TVR, it's not in Waikiki or you know, some other resort area that the TVRs are allowed in, and you, and you don't put down a permit number, then, then you can get fined up to like $10,000 a day. That's a lot. It's I mean, a lot of money. For most people. So... Okay, so he, he's reluctant to actually sign this into law. In fact, he's thinking about a veto on this because it taxes activities, income, which is illegal to start with. Yeah. Right, and, and uh, Council Chair Ron Menor came out with a statement asking, uh, asking the governor to veto it. Uh, and because of that Bill 89. Yeah, um, that it's inconsistent with their enforcement scheme. Yeah. Can we talk about Al Capone for a minute? Sure. Al Capone did a lot of illegal things. Okay, but, but the uh, federal government, with the effort of the FBI, we still have one, yeah? And the IRS. <laughs> and the, uh, thank you. And the IRS. Um, they nailed him on his failure to pay tax for Ill illegal activities. No? Um, not all of them were illegal. Some of them arguably were not illegal, but a lot of them were illegal. Graft, corruption, what have you. Um, you know, but, prostitution, but, uh, alcohol. But uh, the fact of the matter is, whether, whether it's legal or not, you've got to pay tax on it. Right. It's still income. Right. So doesn't that apply here? Sure it does. In other words, the governor should not be dissuaded from, from signing the Airbnb bill because in some counties um, this, this activity is illegal. Fact is, 
It's still income to the owner. It's still taxable. So why not sign the bill? Yeah, I mean, to me, it's two different issues. Um, the issue of whether the, uh, the, the owner can, can legally rent the place in the first place uh, is different from whether the owner, having done so, owes tax on it. Because if, if, if the owner rented it, got money for it, the owner owes tax, whether it's legal or not. It's the same thing as the Al Capone analogy, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I don't understand the politics here. Maybe I do a little. So on one, on one hand, you got the people who don't want B&Bs next to them. On the other hand, you got the politics of people who do want to do B&Bs. Uh, and then you got Airbnb and the other platforms. Oh, so no, and, there, and there's a, uh, another more fundamental reason. They want money. Yes. Now, remember, this, is, this bill uh, in the Senate, uh, it got defeated on a floor vote. But then, but then the Ways and Means chair turned around and said, okay, I got 15 bills for you guys' projects that, that you want. None of these are going to get funded unless this Airbnb bill passes. Horse trade. Yeah, it was actually a little bit more blatant than that. But <laughs> Okay, a blatant horse trade. <laughs> yeah. One guy changed his mind. That's all he, that's all he needed it. Politics. Yeah, it was defeated uh, in, in a 12 12 1 tie. One person changed his mind past 13 12. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Okay, I'm going to ask you for a wraparound characterization of this legislature. But um, so the question is uh, Airbnb sounds like the 800 pound gorilla. You know, they have a lot of clout, they have a lot of campaign contributions, they have a lot of money and, and um, influence in this community, uh, and a lot of clients and constituents, aren't, shouldn't they be ruling the day politically? What is happening politically on the governor's desk on the Airbnb bill? Um, just like in the other bill, uh, there are, you know, the governor is being pushed from two sides. There's the, the one camp that says, hey, uh, we, we don't need this in our neighborhood like the North Shore people, for example. So, so get these guys the heck out. You don't need to facilitate this. So, so, so veto it. And, you know, the people in, in the Senate, among others, are saying, well, we need the money. We're not getting it now. This will help bring the, bring the money in the door. And it will. And it sure will. Yeah. Huge, I mean, there's huge income involved in this business. Yeah, it, 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 it brought money in for... Uh, uh, from the multi-level marketing industry, and it'll do the same for this one. We haven't really mentioned the hotels yet. It seems to me the hotels have a position, an opinion, uh, and, and, and we're uh, trying to influence the governor also. Because yep. they don't want the Airbnbs. They don't want these platform uh, rentals uh, because that, that undermines their business as hotels. It's the same market, isn't it? Well, that's what the uh, Hotel Workers Union says, that they, they don't want this to uh, undermine their business and their workers' um, welfare. Uh, some, some of the hotels earlier in the session were, were claiming, well, we don't really care because it's a different market. Uh, the people who want to stay in these, in these bed and breakfasts, um, they, they don't want hotels in the, in, in the first place. So either for that type of person, it's either they come to, an, uh, they come to a B&B or they don't come. So it's just a different market segment. Yeah. Well, interesting. We may need more study on this. Maybe that's what he's going to do. He's yeah. going to say we need more yeah, study. Yeah, so, so um, and just to be sure, uh, intent to veto doesn't mean he's going to veto it. He just means he's going to take a little bit more time and, and possibly veto it. But he needs to act by July 9th. Right. Hmm. Okay, so those are the ones where he has expressed, um, he has expressed, uh, an inclination to veto. Yes. Um, there's a lot more, isn't there? There's a lot more uh, tax bills pending in the ledge out of the result of the ledge this session. Can you name some? Sure. Uh, there's, a, there's a bill, Senate Bill 1360, that requires uh, partnerships, estates, and trusts to withhold taxes on the income of non-resident uh, partners and beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that, has, that, that, that one's going to become law. That hasn't been the case in the past. And that passed. It, it, yeah, it passed, and now it's going to become, become law. law. It's going to become law. Um, there's a, 
should prepare industry tax credit bill that was, uh, that was pushed by uh, one particular company in the industry, the Senate Bill 972. That's going to become law. Uh, there is going to be a $50 annual vehicle registration surcharge fee for electric vehicles and alternative fuel vehicles, you know, because they don't pay enough fuel tax, I guess. That's Senate Bill 409. So this will impose a tax on electric vehicles? That's right. I thought we were trying to encourage electric vehicles. Think uh, again. Think again. Yeah, okay. we, need, we need that revenue. State Fix those roads, man. is not so clear on this. That's yeah. right. There's also a bill to establish a state highway enforcement program, uh, which basically says that if you get caught parking on a state highway, uh, it's 200 bucks more in addition to what you, what you uh, otherwise would get fined. Parking? Parking. Parking, like park your car? Park your car. On a state highway. On a state highway. That, that includes a lot of roads, though. That's not just the freeway. No, I don't think it includes the freeway because the freeway is federal. Oh, okay. It has to be a state highway. So you get a parking ticket, plus you get this, what did you say, $200? $200 parking violation surcharge. Why do I feel, surcharge, why do I feel that's in order to raise money also? Uh, it has very little to I do with why. incentivizing good behavior or, or, or clearing the roads. It's only to raise money. Uh, I, 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 I think it's a problem on Kauai. Mm. Um, I, I don't know why it's a problem everywhere else, but that's, what, that's what's going to happen. Um, uh, we talked earlier about uh, the Marketplace Facilitator Bill that has already become law. Uh, the estate taxes for Hawaii net taxable estates valued at over $10 million. That went up as well. Uh, that already has become law. Uh, the uh, transient accommodations tax is being imposed on mandatory resort fees. That, that's, that's a little bit different from the bill that was passed. Same in the rate, just the applicability then. Yeah. Uh, it, a similar bill was passed and vetoed last year, but they fixed the problem, and that's already law. So, and there's a lot more stuff. Well, how would you characterize this session in terms of state tax, uh, statutes, uh, improvements, uh, policy, uh, unimprovements, <laughs> as the case may be? Uh, my, my assessment is basically nothing major happened, which is always a good thing. Yeah. Because if something major happens, it's usually bad. Yeah. Right. Bad for taxpayers. No man's it? life, no man or woman's life or property is safe when the legislature is in session. session. <laughs> and maybe they heard the message on that. <laughs> possibly, possibly. <laughs> well, um, there will be uh, time for us to get together again, Tom, after he makes his vetoes. And maybe with regard to the effect of the Tax Reform Act of 2017 going forward. So let's plan to get together in a few weeks again. And look back at more at this session and these vetoes and more at the, at the Federal Tax Reform Act. I stress the word reform. Yeah. I guess you did, yeah. Thank you, Tommy Amachika. Thank you, Jay. Aloha. <laughs>